Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to part 14 of my Logic Pro 10 201 course. In this video, we'll be tracking vocals and storing them in take folders for editing in the next video. So as I mentioned in the last video, we're just tracking vocals here at my home studio, and we're not using any super expensive mic or expensive vocal chain. I'm just using my AKG C414 BULS straight into my Focusrite Sapphire interface. So really nothing special. Also, the singer has only had one day to prep for this. And while she was here, we were playing around at the key of the song, and we found that the key of the song doesn't really match up with her voice. She either has to sing really high, or she has to sing really low to fit into the key of B minor. So after playing around a bit, we found that E flat minor was the best uh, fit for her voice for this song. So the first thing I need to do is I need to shift all of my MIDI regions from B minor up to E flat. So this can be kind of tricky, but I'm gonna select all of these. I'm gonna hold shift and select these three here. Then I'm gonna select all of these and all of these, all while holding shift. And then double click really on any of them. And they'll all show up down here in the piano roll editor. If you accidentally deselect them, just hit Command A to select them all. And then what I'm gonna do is shift these from B up to E flat. So that is four semitones. So I'm gonna hold Option and press up four times. One, two, three, four. So now I'm in E flat. So one of the tricky things is with these reverse pianos that we made, the audio that we created for the reverse pianos, they're all in uh, B minor, they're in the original key. So what I need to do is hit Control B on one of these and create a new reverse piano in E flat. So we'll just render that like we did before, and then we will cut it up like we did before as well. Just use my scissors tool, trim the end off here, and then just cut each of these chords out, just like we did before. Drag over all of them, reverse them in the region inspector, and then delete the two chords that we ended up not using. So let's give this a listen. And remember that last chord, I pulled up the gain on it a bit just so it stood out in the transition a bit more. Then we can just duplicate these over. There we go. Just like so. And the only thing is over here, we don't need that gain boost on these. So I'll just set that back to zero in the region inspector. And I went ahead and just deleted the piano and reverse piano and the other areas since we're, we we aren't using it, but if I decide I want to use it later, I can just copy, copy and paste it over. It's not a big deal. Another problem is the sub kicks in the chorus beat, because remember those were tuned to the key of the song. So right now this first one is on B. To get it up to E, I'd have to pull the pitch knob up four half steps. And I just don't see this sounding very good. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just mute my sub bass aux that I created earlier, just for now, at least for recording, and we'll come back to it and maybe find some new sub kicks that sound good in the key of E flat, um, because I know going down to a low E flat is just not going to sound good. So I'm just gonna, like I said, I'm just gonna mute the sub kick track. But now what I have is um, my song's been completely transposed up to the key of E flat minor. All right, cool. A couple more things. Let's create our first audio track. Actually, I'm gonna create two of these. 
I'm going to make sure that I have each track assigned to input one, which is where I have my uh, mic plugged into. Um, if you want to make sure that your singer can hear themselves sing, make sure to arm them for recording and also input monitor so they can hear themselves uh, singing. You also want to compensate for latency. So go up to Logic Pro 10, Preferences, Audio, and make sure that your buffer size isn't on a higher setting. Otherwise, your singer is going to hear a bunch of delay and, and latency in their recording signal. I put mine at 64 instead of 32 because I do have quite a few plugins still running, and I don't want to get a bunch of pops and clicks um, in the signal um, because my buffer size is too low. So 64 is pretty good. It only Here it's only causing uh, 7.6 milliseconds of round trip latency, so that's just fine. And then the last thing we want to do is we want to go up to Logic Pro 10 Preferences Recording, and here, make sure that where it says overlapping recordings audio, change both of these cycle off and cycle on to create take folder. So what this does is when you record, if I click the arm for recording button there and then press uh, R to record. So right now all it did is it recorded the um, the back uh, the playback of the backing track because I don't have any headphones on. If you record right over that, let's try recording one more time. And what this does is it creates what's called a take folder. A take folder is a way to store your audio recordings, multiple takes of an audio recording and go back and um, choose from them and comp them together later. So to open up a take folder, you just double click and you'll see all three takes. Here's take one, two, and three. And whatever take you have selected will show up at the top. And later on, I'll show you how you can um, edit these together to use different parts from each one. So just make sure that that take uh, folder options on because I'm, be I'm going to be doing a lot of uh, overlapping recordings. All right, so we're finally all set to record the vocals. In true home studio fashion, we are both in the same room while recording, so we both have headphones on and I have the studio monitors uh, muted. So my method for recording vocals like this is to do it section by section. So we're gonna do several takes of the verse, then several takes of the second verse, then several takes of the choruses, and then finally harmonies at the end. So I'm not going to show everything we did, but I'll show you the key parts. So in this first take, you'll hear the signal level jump around a bit because I was still adjusting the levels on my preamp. Tell me that you see it. Can you feel it? Can you hear it? Call your name. It's a broken world, a broken world alone. We are kids with no shelter, lies from our leaders, paint from the sky to the sea. Death with no freedom, hearts with no heroes, baby it's just you and me. Okay, so if you've never worked with a singer who's learning your music and not recording their own music, it can be a bit of a challenge and it typically takes them a while before the song and melody and the feel really sinks in. So we did several takes on the first verse before it sank in. But as you'll see, you can just record right over the first take and Logic will automatically create a take folder. And you can do this over and over and over again until you think you have sufficient takes to comp together a proper good sounding take. Tell me that you see it. Can you feel it? Kids with no shelter, lies from my leaders, paint from the sky to the sea. Death with no freedom, hearts with no heroes, baby it's just you and me. So after a few takes, the feel of the song was starting to sink in. Tell me that you see it, can you feel it, can you hear it? Call your name, it's a broken world, a broken world alone. 
So I was getting a lot of good takes for the first half of the verse, but the second half needed some work. There's a function in Logic called Quick Punch or Quick Punch In. You can turn this on by going up to Record, Allow Quick Punch In. This allows you to start playback anywhere and then press R to start a new recording without disrupting the playback. So with this, the singer can hear the previous take during playback, and then she can jump in right where you want her to record right after you press R. You can also press R to punch out to end the recording. So you technically could punch in and out multiple times to punch in multiple non-adjacent phrases in a section this way. So I did that a few times to get some better takes for the second half of the verse. We are kids with no shelter, lies from our leaders, pain from the sky to the sea. Death with no freedom, hearts with no heroes, baby it's just you and me. So in a perfect world where there's unlimited rehearsal time, I'd love to just rehearse the song until it's perfect and then just do like two or three takes per section. It's always nice to work with bands and artists like that, but it's not always the case. After several takes though, she got pretty comfortable with it. Tell me that you see it, can you feel it, can you hear it, call your name. It's a broken world, a broken world alone. We got kids with no shelter, lies from our leaders, pain from the sky to the sea. Death with no freedom, hearts with no heroes, baby it's just you and me. So then you just repeat the process for the other sections in your song. I usually like to do the verses first, then the chorus, so we jumped over to the second verse. It's such a tragedy. So once again, she was having some issues with the second half, so I went back to the quick punch in method and we recorded a bunch of takes of just the second half of the second verse separately. All right, so after all is said and done, um, I had a whole bunch of takes for the first verse and about half of these are takes that I probably won't even listen to because the, the first four or five were pretty bad. They were just her warming up. Um, the second verse, uh, not quite as many takes, although... We fully embraced the uh, quick punch for the second half of the second verse. And also for the very last phrase, I had her punch in that last phrase a few times just by itself. And then for the chorus, um, not quite as many takes because they were a lot better. They're a lot more consistent. So those are all the chorus takes. And then we also uh, punched in some harmonies at different points, like a third, an octave, um, a fifth, whatever. Um, so I may or may not use these in the final uh, version. I may actually go in and, and create artificial harmonies, or I may blend these with artificial harmonies to create a more natural sound. So in the next video, we'll go through each of these takes, and we will create a composite take that is the best possible take for each section. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. You can also check me out on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, and if you really want to, you can support the channel with a monthly donation on Patreon. Thank you for the support, and thanks for watching.